Hey everybody, my name is Mike and I'm very excited about today's video because we are finally getting back to the Ford Triple Nickel, the 555 backhoe that Clint from CNC Equipment hooked us up with. You can see we've got the head off and quite a bit of parts. I got that tarp over it because it is a little rainy today. I've got a playlist for this, so if you want to get caught up on it, the best way to do it would be go through that playlist and watch it. But the short version is Clint from CNC Equipment, who also has a YouTube channel. I'll put a link in the description. Hooked us up with a guy that was trying to get rid of a backhoe. He just wanted it out of his property. Ran wind parts, like they all say, and Clint trucked it down here for us. I've never done anything like this before. We've got her down pretty good, kind of going through everything. And today we're finally starting to put everything back together. We're going to start out in the shop, if you will. Don't mind the Subaru Ford Ranger project. She'll be coming up soon at some point on the channel, probably in December. Got the little battery inverter plugged in with my LED light so we can shine some light on the situation. But we got the head sitting in here. We had it surfaced and they also I had them knock down the intake side and the exhaust side for us. Like I said, I've never done anything like this before. I mean, I've changed a lot of parts for Dirt Perfect and I've, I've worked on some Dirt Perfect stuff, but that's him diagnosing it and looking at it. I've never been this deep into anything. So I'm pretty excited to learn about it. But just to give you a little bit of idea of what we're trying to get done in today's video, my goal is to get the whole block put back together. So get the head put back together, the valves and everything. We've got rings we've got to do. We've got rod bearings. They're NASCAR performance. This thing's gonna be flying around the woods and we've got some injectors. So I wanna get all that put back together today. But hopefully by the end of the week, by Sunday, we'll have this thing up and running got one of these fancy valve lapping tools. Now I have seen where guys have chucked these into drills or made little adapters with some bolts to chuck these into drills to make them go faster, but I've never lapped valves before. I've just watched a whole lot of YouTube videos. So I'm gonna do it by hand so I can go nice and slow with it. Got everything organized over here in bags, each valve with the spring, the retainer clip, and all of that. So we're just gonna start with number one is the side that the thermostat goes in. I did get a new thermostat just because we took that one out. It's pretty inexpensive. But we'll start on this end. This will be the front of the backhoe. I'm gonna kind of clean each valve up first with a little bit of parts cleaner and a soft bristle brush. Just try to get all the crud off of there. So the actual head side of it, there's no pitting. That looks really good. Still just a little bit of pitting on the valve itself. I'm gonna run it a couple more times at that grit and then maybe we'll step it up to the next one. I don't know if that's necessary or not, but we're gonna try it. I wanna see the difference. Had to put that zip tie on there. The handle kept spinning inside the suction cup. But it's working great now. After about 10 minutes, it looks pretty good on both sides. I don't know if you have to step up to the next one or not. You know, it's not like it's a high performance engine or anything, but I'm going to. That first one was 500 grit. The next one's 800 grit. I kind of just want to see the difference that it makes. So here's kind of the before. Drag the light across there for you. And there's the after. I don't notice much of a difference with the human eye, but I don't, I don't know that I would. I'm going to do that step though. I'm going to do those two levels. Here's the before of all of them. Those exhaust ones look the worst out of them. The other thing. I did switch to the drill. I mean, it chucks right up in there with no modifications. If it fits, it ships or something like that. Uh, I'm not going crazy fast with it. I'm just going nice and slow. Nothing insane, but it's definitely a lot less effort than doing it the old fire starter method. But that's how they turned out. They all look pretty similar to that. So that's what we're looking like. They definitely look a lot better than what they did. Like I said, that one is definitely the worst one. There's gonna be some input on this one in the comment section, but if you're watching this video, it's already too late. Overall, not bad. Definitely a lot better than what it was. 
I'm going to do a little bit of a redneck leak test on it. Drop these all back in. And then we're just going to pour some fluid up here in these low spots and see what leaks out of it. I want something thinner than water, but something that doesn't evaporate crazy quick. Gas also evaporates quite crazy quick. And you know we don't have the accuracy with the safety nozzle to do this. But we'll try. The goal here, if you're wondering, is to see if anything leaks through the valve seats. That's, that's the goal. That's what we're after. Also, if you didn't pick it up that valve compound, it's basically like liquid sandpaper. That'll work. We'll leave that sit. I gotta run back to the house and uh, grab a couple things. I gotta get the head gasket kit because it comes with new seals for the valves. So I need to grab that real quick. Come back and see if there's any gas in these holes i don't i don't know so it's been about half an hour I had to go do a little editing and a couple other odds and ends we've got gas sitting on top of everything still which is great and there's no gas on the exhaust side which is fantastic and there's nothing leaking out the intake side Beautiful. That's a very scientific test I just did. Let's see if we can get the valve springs back on these rigs. What is your, what's the plan here? Maybe a little bit more than that, huh? We gotta flip her over. Yep. Lovely. So in the new gasket kit, it comes with new seals and cups. One of the valve gets a cup, one gets a seal. I think the cup goes on the exhaust side, but I gotta check out the manual real quick to double check that. So in the manual, Intake valve assembly. It has that little cup and just that keeper in the spring. And then on the exhaust, it's got this style, which I'll show you in a second. And just a regular seal, a rubber seal that goes on one of those grooves. And then the spring, of course. So intake gets a little rubber cup. So I know it's off camera. I'm just kind of dipping the springs and stuff in the parts cleaner, hitting them with that little brush real quick. Just kind of getting the worst of the stuff off. Valve comes up through. This slides over like that. Spring goes on. That goes on. All right, so here's how these things stay on. We got these little keepers. There's two little keepers on each one. There's a ridge on the inside of that keeper. Uh, hopefully that's showing up. This sits on top of the spring like so. Both these keepers will get dropped inside like that. And then there's a groove on these valve stems. Those get pushed up. Those keepers drop down in and ride in those grooves. Oh, you see, we're losing things. No oh dear. I just wanted to show you something and this is the thanks I get. Here it is. They ride down in those grooves and then the spring pressure pushes that all up and keeps it all locked together. I'll try to show you a close up of putting these on.
So we got those all back on and they, they look right. We'll know real quick when we fire it up if something went wrong there. I am going to, uh, just real quick, a wire wheel on a drill. I'm not gonna put it on a grinder, I don't wanna get that aggressive. I just kinda wanna knock some of this heavier flaky stuff down, especially kind of on this side. Clean this head up just a little bit and I wanna hit it with some rust reformer. The next thing I wanna do this evening, I got some time left. Seems like the perfect opportunity to do something I've never done before. Let's try to get these three pistons out. Okay, there they are. This one's gonna be drain oil. We put some fresh oil in it the other day when we tried to start it, just to be on the safe side. The oil pan's like cast, not even like, it is, it's cast. It's very heavy. I don't know if it's like a design of a skid plate slash oil pan, if it's just made to, you know, be a little tougher and that's why it's so heavy, but it does have a couple big bolts in it aside from just like your normal oil pan bolts. So we're gonna take those out. But a few people asked about this, I was using in a previous video. That's what she looks like. She just fits on a socket, however you wanna do it. They have different size ones. And then uh, it just wraps around the wrench, depending on which way you need it to go. And it works pretty well. Of course, if you got that in on it, you can do the old wrench on wrench trick, which works pretty well, but sometimes they'll slip. It's just a little bit more secure way to do it. And what I've really found I liked it is getting on hydraulic lines where you can't get a closed end on there. On a hydraulic lines that are kind of rusted or tough, it works well, just kind of help break it loose. But. Anyway, that's what it is. I'm gonna try to get this thing out and I'll show you a little bit more up close look at what we're dealing with. I can't tell if it's just the bolt moving or just the nut and bolt moving together or if the nut's actually spinning. I'm just gonna mark Right there. And hopefully, that'll tell me what I'm looking for. If I hit it and the mark on the nut is now, or no longer lined up with the mark on the bolt, then I know the bolt is spinning too. The marks. They're staying together, so we're spinning all this one Still one tucked way back up in here on each side.
Good soup, huh? Good soup. Probably clean all that sludge up. So it is the following morning, a little overcast this morning. We're still supposed to get up in the upper 70s today, mid 50s for the low, can't complain about that. I brought the light over, walk around underneath and I'll show you what we got going on with the crank here in just a second. But before we do that, there's something else I wanna get knocked out real fast. Open up the parts holder here. It does a good job. Because hopefully in the next few days, we'll be mounting the exhaust back on there. So I wanna go ahead and clean it up a little bit. It's got all kinds of gunk inside and just start getting some coats of rust reformer on it. I gotta try to take into consideration the dry time of some of this stuff so that we're not waiting on it when we get to that point. There is. This is what was sitting on top of the cylinders. It's just the exhaust breaking down over time that got washed down into the top of the cylinders. We saw that on the camera. That's kind of why we decided to take it a little bit further and open everything up. Should be able at your local auto parts store to find you what we call a stick. And they just, they work really well for this. And if you don't own one, I think you can get one through their lease program probably. ghost. All right. There we go. Cool. As far as that goes, we'll cut this off and I'll just make a new plate in the future if we get that far. I can do that after it's installed, but getting this step done is going to make it a little bit easier while it's off the machine. Just kind of wipe whatever little amount of stuff is left. Looks pretty good. And then I'm just gonna put a little bit of heat to it. One, draw a little bit of the moisture out. Two, warm the metal up just a little bit. She's using that rust oleum rust reformer. And that way we can hit this with a few coats today. All right, let's look under this thing and see how the bottom looks. So one of the concerns I had was when we drained the oil, a whole bunch of water came out, a whole bunch. And I was worried that the crank might have been sitting in some of that water. But I don't see any signs of rust or any issues like that. So I think we're gonna be okay there. I think we got lucky, so that's good. So if you've ever done this before, you're gonna get a good kick out of it, because I never have. And if you haven't ever done this before, well, we're gonna to learn together. So you see right there, that's the bottom of the piston rod. That's the back side of the piston right up through there. There's one, two nuts right there. They have to come off. And then you just, you just push her out. You just push her out, bud. Easy as that. So keep trying to figure out how to film this. I don't know. We're just, I'm going to set you here carefully and I'm going to hope you can see things. Okay. I'll add a light to the situation. This is what we're going for. I don't know if you can use an impact on these. You might be able to, but I don't want to risk it. So we're just going to do this. Okay. All right, so now we, now we do something else. I, got, I don't know what though. Maybe some love taps with a dead blow and a piece of wood, perhaps. What's it doing up there? No, okay. Okay. 
and then we just pull it out, huh? I'll be dipped. So the rod bearings here actually don't look bad. There's not any wear or lip, and I don't see any noticeable scarring or anything crazy. I don't even think I'm going to mess with changing them. I did buy some new ones, but... And there's not even a... Looks fine. The piston, on the other hand. Oh dear, oh, no. Oh, Mike. So, you know, we got that. So I've got four rings here. Let's see how many come off here. What I'm confused about is this does not match what I'm looking at. But that doesn't mean anything. It's stuck on the side closest to me here. And these are directional. Some of them have bevels. Some of them are not directional, but some of them are. And I don't know if it's going to show up on camera. But right there it says top. joint for that. Well, there should be a joint for that. There's a little wire in there inside that spring. And you can So every piston ring set for a Ford 201 has four rings that I can find online. And none of them have a ring that looks like this. All the replacement pistons for a Ford 201 from that time period also have a spot for four rings. I can't find a tag on that block anywhere either. They use 201s, that blue engine is the replacement engine and everything that I can find online says that the replacement engine was still a 201, but clearly something's different, fellas. I've gotta get down to my detective skills. I do tell you what I'm gonna go ahead and do though. You're going to hate me for it, but I'm going to run these pistons even with this scoring because all that scoring is below the ring, so it should still have enough compression. And the cylinder walls, the scoring on the cylinder walls is below where the rings come to a stop. That's going to make some people unhappy, and that's okay. I am going to go ahead and pull the other two pistons to just see because if they're worse than this and the scoring goes past the rings, then we've got to make a decision if we want to pull the whole block and have it machined out because they sell oversized piston kits for that engine. So let's go ahead and pull the other tube is because before we order a set of rings for this, which is clearly different than what I have on hand, These rod bearings also look pretty good. But I'm also keeping these together so we keep the correct machined face with the correct machined face. This cylinder looks a lot better than that first one we took out. There's a, 
I mean, there's some striations you can see there, but not the scoring that you saw on the first one. Looks a lot better. Definitely glad we pulled them though. You can see all the crud built up in those rings. You know there's not gonna be a lot of movement in those rings like we need out of them. This one also looks pretty good. I mean, there's, you know, there's some stuff going on, but nothing I'm too concerned about. Check this out, though. See that ring right there? Ring's got a little damage to it, which is interesting. Got the valves lapped, they look pretty decent, and they're back on the head. We got the pistons out, and I'm glad we went that far because we saw a couple rings that had some pretty good damage on it. So I'm glad we got that out. And we found a little damage on that one piston, but again, it's below the rings and even in the cylinder sleeve where it's at, which these aren't sleeved blocks, by the way. You can take them in and have them milled up. They have a couple oversized kits, and you could drop sleeves in and you could put some oversized kits in, but I don't think I really want to do that. I don't think it's bad enough to warrant that. I think it'll still run. So we're making forward progress. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, why would you put this much effort into it? It's just kind of an old junk backhoe. But if you've ever looked at how much equipment cost, I'm fine with putting some money into this. I mean, it's a backhoe with all the glass. I don't think it would take a lot to get the heater going. It's just heater hoses and a, a blower motor. If we got heat in this thing, daggone it, bud, that's called a luxury in life. And uh, with extend the hoe and auxiliary hydraulics. Now, are there some things mocking me the whole time I'm doing this? This looks like the newest hose on the whole thing. And there's a lot of money in the hydraulic hoses. Honestly, it's probably gonna be the most expensive part of this whole operation is replacing hydraulic hoses as they blow because I'm not a preventative maintenance kind of person. My budget doesn't allow it. But my point is it's worth putting some time and money into because for me to go out and buy something like this, even used, even a clapped out backhoe that runs and has good hydraulics with a cab on it. And I know you don't have to have the cab, but buddy, the heat's just so nice. To have something like that, you're going to be spending a pretty penny on that. So I don't mind doing what we're doing here. I'm actually kind of having a good time with it. Now we're as far as we can go on the actual pistons themselves until we get some new rings in. And I've got to do some research. I keep Googling and looking it up, and everything I find has four rings on it. The only cylinders that have three rings are the gas pistons. But I'm missing something. Somebody said... This engine's painted blue, which means it's been replaced. It's a replacement engine for this machine. Maybe they found something that they knew would fit and put it in there, and it's not actually a 201. Maybe it's something a little bit different. Who knows? Not this guy, but I'll figure it out. We still have some things we can do, though. I do have a ball hone, and I got some tips from Clint on how to do that. We're going to run these cylinders real quick so they're cleaned out and ready to go. And I want to go ahead and address some wiring. Remember when we first hooked this up to a battery, we had some nice spicy smoke coming out of the alternator because there's a few open areas on this wiring that's been worn out. I want to go ahead and get that addressed and fixed and replace some of these ends. That way whenever we do get the rings in we're kind of ready to go. So this is a ball hone. This one's made by Flex Hone which is, seems to be a pretty common brand. I did quite a bit of research on this and talked to Clint about it a little bit as well and a couple other guys that have used ball hones to kind of get their input. And it looks like as long as you use it for what it's intended for it's a good tool. It's not for resizing the cylinder. You're not trying to step up to the next cylinder size and you're not going to get professional machining with this. All we're trying to do is just kind of clean the cylinder wall from all that debris that's in there from while this machine was sitting. That's it. Just a quick three or four second up and down. And I've learned 
from talking to Clint and watching some videos that the up and down motion, up and down motion is just as important as the speed round and round. That's the worst explanation I've ever heard for a ball hone. But we want a cross hatching pattern. So I don't just want to stick it in there and let it spin and then go up and down real slow. I kind of want to move up and down rapidly. I don't know. That's what I've been told. And that's what I've seen on YouTube videos. And I've never seen anything on YouTube that's been wrong. Let me give you a before on this cylinder. See how we kind of have some stuff right there on the edges. Nothing crazy, but there's a little bit on the edges there. Kind of like all these, just from sitting. I think I need to be faster on my up and down. It's got a little cross hatch pattern, but not much. But I'm not going to do that one again. Because I don't want to go too much. I don't, if I make it too big, the rings aren't going to seal. You know what I mean? So I got to spin slower and up and down faster. I am uh, spraying this in here, by the way. It's just WD-40. They do make a honing lube if you want to use it. Apparently I've got a leak. Now don't forget the lube step, that's going to be crucial. Oh dear. I don't know, I didn't feel good about that one at all. Just wipe them out and take a gander here. Wow, it really does a good job though. Looks a lot better in there. I think my up and down could probably be faster. Doesn't look like my cross hatching is as steep as it should be. But you know, it's not gonna be it's not gonna be perfect the first time you do it. Definitely an improvement though. You can still see, you know, where some of that stuff was, but it feels Feels good. So there's the after. You can see it just kind of cleaned it up a bit. Definitely need to be faster on my up and down. Yeah, the cylinder walls definitely aren't perfect, but neither are the pistons, so those two should pair up fantastically. I see no issues with this at all. I don't know what could possibly go wrong at this point. All right, so let's scope out the wiring here. There's just some things I want to replace. Like, I'm just, I'm not a fan of that style connector. I got some heat shrink connectors I want to put on there. Somewhere, here we go. This is the exciter wire, whatever you'd like to call it for the starter. It's all dry rot and cracked, and it just kind of... Would you cooperate? There you go. All the way back, there was a spade or a blade connector on there, a female blade connector on there. I need to put a new one of those on for the starter. And there's just a few spots down through this harness. This is what all runs up to the alternator and all the forward electronics, all the sensors. You can see where we've had some melting issues. So I want to go through all that. Take that tape off, see what we got going on in there. Replace some of these. That's not gonna be good for anything. And just kind of try to get ahead of the ball game. So here's what the piece together section was that went on there. I guess I need to cut about that much or add that much back. Fantastic. Don't hate it. Now you're gonna find this hard to believe, but with my organizational skills, I don't know where my daggone heat gun's at. And that's shocking, because I always put my tools up exactly where they belong. I did find a regular lighter though. That'll do us a little bit less damage. So that's the exciter wire. 
all fixed up and replaced. Ready to rock. That is the main wire coming off the battery and it's got quite a bit of tapeage on it, which tells me there's probably something going on behind there. Anyway, I just want to, uh, well, I want to add a little bit more protection. It's got some protection back here, but not a whole lot. And I want to add a little bit more, a little bracket right here. Oh yeah. You can see it's got good protection all the way back to here. But for whatever reason it stops right there. And this runs under the fuel tank. So let's just go ahead and reinforce this while we got her out in the open. That's going to slide back over there. Like so. And then get that worked up and over it. Then we can slide this heat shrink like that. All right. So there's the new cable protection for the hot wire coming from the battery that goes over to the starter. That's a good improvement. That should save us some sparks. So I've got pretty much all the wires separated and pulled out. I got, you know, the supplies I have, some of those ends fixed, but you can see we've definitely got some exposed wire issues. And I've got some on the back side here as well. I got to look at the tech manual and figure out where the heck that's supposed to go. And I've got one, two, three, four of these where they're supposed to go. I'm guessing there's something, nothing too critical, like some lights or something, but we'll figure it out. The next thing uh, I'll have to do as far as wiring goes, I just, I got to get some more supplies. I don't have any small wire like this. And I'd like to get a little bit more wire wrap so that all this stuff, this is under the fuel tank and it's just, it's not a pain in the butt to get the fuel tank off, but since we've got it off, it just makes sense to go ahead and address some of this now. And most of these fixes are pretty inexpensive. So it's not too terrible of a deal, too much of a deal. I don't know. It's not too much of a something to go ahead and try to get that straightened out just a little bit. And got that cleaned up just a little bit. I just kind of took the worst of everything out, sprayed some more of that rust converter in there. And yeah, it's heavy, it's running. That's fine with that rust converter. As much rust as in here, we'll just spray it heavy and let her soak. And then I've got some rubber to put down on here. So whenever we put the battery back in, it'll be sitting on a little rubber mat. Be a, a big improvement to what it was. So I'm pretty happy with where we're at on this thing. Trust me, I realize it's a lot of work. There's a lot to be done on this. This thing is rough. I'm pretty sure it sat on top of a hill, rolled down the hill, smacked into a tree break, stopped at the tree break momentarily, then bounced off and rolled backwards into the river. And now we have it. But I'm having a good time learning on these things. I'm having, uh, I'm just having fun. I don't know how else to say it. And knowing what a good backhoe costs, I'm okay with putting a little money into a rough one so we can get something out of it. I don't know, I got nothing else to say about it. I gotta pick up some wiring supplies. I gotta do some research and figure out what rings I'm supposed to have because what the manual says is what I bought and what it says online is what I bought and clearly the pistons say, nah, that's not right. So we gotta figure that situation out. But all in all, um, it's got bad bones. <laughs> but it's got good vibes. I don't know. I was gonna try to come up with something positive, but that's the best I can do at this point. Uh, yeah, good news is next video will be on the YouTube yacht because there's no way those rings will be in time for the next video. So we'll be back, we'll be back on the YouTube yacht on the next video, finishing off the floor forming or working on it anyway. And then hopefully after that YouTube yacht video, the parts for this, the rings and the wiring stuff will be in and we'll be back on the backhoe. One thing about this, the thing that is scaring me the most at this point is that the people that had it, that had Clint get it out of their yard for free, 
they knew something on here made it not worth having. And I don't know if I've found that thing yet or if it's yet to be discovered. I've found a lot of things that would scare people away from a machine. I just don't know if I've, if I've found the thing yet. That's what I'm not sure of. But there's only one way to find out. Stay subscribed. Make sure you got your notifications on. Check in every Thursday and Sunday. See what we're up to. And hopefully in the future, we'll have this thing running. Or we'll roll it down a hill on fire. I don't know at this point.